In this video, we're going to take a look at creating an action that will allow us to resize our finished image. It's going to apply a stroke border to it, and it's also going to allow us to use selective sharpening. Plus, the whole thing is going to be completely adjustable. Taking a look at the start image I've selected, I've deliberately gone for an image without a background layer. Now, background layers are vitally important when it comes to actions. The one I'm using is a smart object, so I've taken it through Camera Raw. I've opened it into Photoshop as a smart object. You may have an image which started off with a background layer, and for various reasons you may have unlocked that background layer. It is now called Layer Zero, or whatever you renamed it to. So we're going to set up an action which is going to cater for smart objects for background layers which aren't even there. Now the important thing before we start anything is just to click and make sure you're using and make sure you're working on this first visible layer. I've selected this layer here. While we're at it, we're going to come up, we're just going to go to image, we're going to go to image size, and with the image size, there's the pixel dimensions of this document, there's the document size, here's the important thing, the resolution, 300 pixels per inch, we're going to leave the resolution untouched. I'm now just going to click cancel right for the actions itself if you haven't got the actions panel open if you go to window there it is at the top actions now mine is in with my uh, layers my history so when i click on this it'll just reveal the action panel or it'll open it for you just going to bring it on the desktop make it a little bit bigger so we can see exactly what's going to happen now the first thing we're going to do is you can either create a new set, a new folder to store your action in, or you can actually use one of your existing folders or sets. If you drop down, clicking on this folder here, this is for a new set, and I'm simply going to call this image size, and just press enter or return, clicking on OK, and it's now added it. If we drop down, I'm going to click on this folded piece of paper, which is the Create New Action. Thank you for the prompt. If we come up to where it says New Action, it's asking us for a name. I'm going to swipe across and I'm going to put in Resize, Stroke and Sharpen. Now, it just gives you a little bit of an indication on what the action's actually going to be doing. So that is quite important to put something in there that you can identify the action. Now, here's the set that we created, but if you want to use another set, another folder, just simply select it from the drop down list, then click on record. You'll notice the red light has come on. Everything we now do is being recorded, but don't worry, it is not real time, so you don't have to panic. Let's create ourselves a background layer. Now, I've already, and it is, as I said, important just to click on the first visible layer because what's going to happen next? We're going to come to Image. We're going to drop down to Duplicate. When I click on Duplicate, we're simply going to click on OK. This has now duplicated our image. And if we take a look at this, you can see there's our first one, our Smart Object uh, dash one dot PSD. We've now got Smart Object dash one copy. So this is a copy. Take a look down here. We've got the resizing. The first one here is to duplicate first document. We're now going to come up. We're going to go to layer and we're now going to drop down to flatten image. When we click on flatten image, there is our background layer. We're now going to come up. We're going to go to file. We're going to drop down to automate. We're going to come across to fit image. Now when fit image opens, we can now come in and we can give it a size of our choice. Now I'm going to leave this at 1024. The height I'm going to leave at 1024 because I'm going to be doing this for my website gallery. And I'm going to tick don't enlarge, which may seem a little bit daft, but don't forget this is fully adjustable. So I tend to leave this as normal, just set on don't enlarge. We can now click and it disappears. I've got the hand tool selected. I just need to press command or control to zoom into the image. Let's go into 100%. We're going to duplicate our background layer once using command J, control J, and again using command J, control J. We're going to switch off layer one copy. We're going to click on layer one and you can see the way it's identifying it here. We're now going to drop down to FX. We're going to come down to Stroke, and when Stroke opens, uh, you can't actually see it because the position is outside. We're going to change this to Inside. There's our Stroke border. Looking just a little bit thin for this image size, I'm going to type in 5. That looks better like that. Don't forget, you can change the color as well if you want to, but I'm going to leave this set on white. Let's click OK to that. In it goes. We're going to click on the top layer of the layer stack here, layer one copy. We're going to switch it on. It's now hidden, that stroke effect. 
Now on this layer, we're going to come up to Filter, we're going to drop down to Sharpen, and you can go to whichever one you feel uh, comfortable with, Smart Sharpen or Unsharp Mask. You can use any of these two. My favourite is the uh, Smart Sharpen, got a nice big preview window. Just going to move it across, and if you click down, that's how it looks before. If you release it, that's how it looks with the sharpening. Now the amount I've set in here is 63, which is yeah, that's brilliant for the camera that I am using, but you may need to experiment with these figures. The radius, I've got one pixel radius, that looks pretty good. If you're using the unsharp mask, you might set the threshold to zero. Back to the smart sharpen, remove from the drop down menu, I've selected lens blur, and I've also ticked more accurate. Why? Because it sounds good. The other reason is it doesn't use a more accurate algorithm, which, uh, yeah does actually do a better job. Clicking OK to that. Now I mentioned selective sharpening. So far we've sharpened the entire picture from corner to corner from top to bottom. If we put in a layer mask we can now invert this layer mask which is going to hide the sharpening effect. To invert it press Command I or Control I, that's Command I Control I and there it is. At this stage we can now stop our action. Right, let's just take a look. I'm going to bring this into the center. We're going to make it bigger again so we can see everything that's going on with this. We've got the resize stroke. We've got duplicate first document. We've got the flatten image. If you take a look at some of the other actions or the sets, you can see these little square boxes with the line going through. Now, this indicates that there is a toggle dialog on and off. Now, what is that? Well, let's come down to duplicate first document. I'm going to bring my cursor off and there's the same thing, toggle dialog on or off. Now, when I click down, you'll notice there's a toggle gone in for this duplicate first document. It's now showing on the stroke resize and showing on this set. So this now shows us that within this set, there's going to be an action which is going to ask us to take uh, various actions or do various things. And there it is, duplicate first document. It'll stop at this stage. We're going to drop down to fit image, which was 1024 by 1024. I'm going to put a toggle in here, which again is going to stop. It's now going to come down. We're going to go down to Layer Styles, which was the stroke border. We just scroll down. You can see there it is, five pixels. We're going to put a toggle in here. Next, we're going to drop down to the Smart Sharpen. I'm going to put a toggle in there. Great stuff. Right, let's come back to our original image. We're now going to just make sure that you're on that uh, first layer here. We're going to come, we're going to go to Resize Stroke. We're going to play the action through. It now reaches this first stage, which is the duplicate first document. It's asking us for a name. I'm going to swipe across. You can see it would call it layer or it would call it copy two, but I'm now going to just allow it to be called St. Fagans. We're going to click OK to that. Through it comes. You can see there it is there. And if we come in, I'm going to make this um, 2,500 pixels. And I'm just going to put exactly the same for the heights. I know it's not going to be the same for the heights, but it doesn't really matter. You could leave this blank as well if you want to. If you want to use the uh, the finished image size, just click cancel and allow the action to run through. Right, clicking on OK, it's now going to come. It's going to stop at the stroke border. Now we can't see anything, so let's just shuffle things around a bit. We're going to zoom into this area here. Moving down, that looks pretty small for the size. We're in at 50%, so I'm just going to strike across and put in 12. Yep, that looks good. Once again, you can change the color if you want to. Coming down to Smart Sharpen, if we just take a look at this area here, there's that uh, weight. So I'm just going to take this up into 72. That looks better. We're going to click OK to so that through. It comes stopping at this position here using Command-0, Control-0. And there it is. Let's just come up. We're going to go to image. We're going to come down to image size, 2,500 pixels on the long side. If we drop down, there it is there. The resolution has remained untouched at 300 pixels per inch. Now, what about this selective sharpening? All we need to do is we need to pick up the gradient tool. I'm going to select the radial gradient. I've dropped the opacity down to 70%. I just simply press 7 on the keyboard. And the important thing, by clicking in the Windows Open Dark Gradient Editor, I'm selecting the foreground through to transparent. That's foreground to transparent. I'm going to click OK. I need to put it as white, though. So coming across, I'm just going to press X on the keyboard. That has now put white as my foreground color. And I can come in. The radial gradient is going to give us a radius around that area there. And you can see that little white spot 
gives a really soft transition so you're not going to be able to detect where you've actually done this. Let's move this over to that area and come in around the image. Deliberately going over the top part wouldn't normally sharpen this area but I want to show you how removing the stroke border you don't need to worry about it because you can come in and when we to the final stages just sharpen in there it is five green bottles there was ten I know a song about that but don't worry I'm not going to sing it and if we just finish off by doing that that looks pretty good look at it then zoom in to 100% take a look see how it's looking this is the main area there and you can if you want to just drop down the opacity a little bit that looks brilliant using command 0 control 0 to go to fit on screen we're now going to use command E control E to merge the layer down so command E control E to merge the layer down and command E control E one more time and there is our finished image if we come to file we can drop down to save as taking a look there it is that's the name we put in St. Fagans we can place it wherever you want I could put in my finish folder we're going to change this to a JPEG so there it is and uh, click OK to that it's now saying yeah I know there's a replacement there and the quality going to set for 8 click OK to that there it is job done the original is safe and sound we haven't changed this at all we haven't resized it we haven't applied a stroke border to it everything has been done as an action which is completely adjustable and completely flexible go on give it a try hope you've enjoyed this video but until the next time it's happy imaging and take care